Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to take the preset that I use live on my FM3 with my band Ragdoll. I want to import it into the FM9 and expand upon it to make use of some of the power that the FM9 gives us. To get started, I've got my PRS Custom 24 in Drop C plugged straight into the FM9. The first thing that I'm going to do is drag in my FM3 preset. I exported it from the FM3 to my desktop. So I can just go preset. I'm going to come down to import preset and then select it right here. We'll do that and open it. And the beauty of the FM3, FM9 and AxeFX3 is you can simply export presets from one device and open them on the other device. So here's the preset. It's all come in. I'm using the USA lead mid gain. I have a gate after that. I've got my main personal cabinet IR, LT TV Mix 7. This one is available for free on Exchange. I'm using a parametric EQ for some pretty surgical cuts here and then a high and a low cut over here. I've got a multi-band compressor to kind of tame the chugs when I'm really going for it on this guitar and drop C. A multi-tap delay set up for some chorus and delay on my main lead sound and then a dual delay set up for a rhythmic delay. I've talked about all these blocks separately here on this channel and on my channel. I will link the five minute tones video that I did breaking down the FM3 version of this. But for now, I'll just let you hear the four scenes on here. basically covers everything that I need live on the FM3. It's pretty bare bones. It lets me focus on playing the songs. I'll give you an example of a guitar solo from one of the songs in our live set recently. <laughs> However, there are a few sounds in specific parts of specific songs that I do like to have access to, and I'm going to dial them in on the FM9. The first thing that I want to do is just extend the grid a little bit. So we just drag the output one block over here, and I will pull that across. Now, one thing that I like to do live, and this will work on the FM3, is to have a stereo pitch detune on my sound for the gigs that we do in stereo. The little clip that I played, you actually had some stereo detune on there. So let's start with a pitch block over here. Now this defaults to the dual detune mode and kind of some classic settings are to go minus nine cents on one side, nine cents on the other side, and to pan them hard left and hard right. You can put in like a couple of very short delays over here, you know, somewhere between like three and 30 milliseconds. Basically, this is gonna make everything sound super wide stereo and it sounds epic live. <laughs> I also like some reverb on here. One great thing about the FM9 is you can run two high quality reverbs in every preset, basically without affecting the core amount of CPU. So what I'm gonna do here, let's right click right at the end. I'll place a reverb on here. I really like the London plate reverb on here, which is this one. I'm gonna bring the overall time down to about 
1.5 seconds. I will leave the mix where it is. And a cool little tip with any reverb, especially for distorted sounds, go to the EQ section, set the low cut slope to 12 dB and bring the low cut frequency up above 200, 250 hertz. This will keep it from muddying up the low end. You can also experiment with detune before reverb or reverb before detune. They both sound pretty great. <laughs> Because we play live with in-ears, it is nice to have a little bit of reverb in the ears there. Now, on the FM3, I would have to make a choice between either the pitch detune or the reverb in this preset. I actually save two versions, one with detune, one with reverb. For the FM9, I can have both if I want. I can have my cake and eat it too. So that is what's happening there. I'm just going to leave those on across all these presets. That's just making the overall kind of preset sound a little bit more massive live. It is a little bit easier for me to play on as well. These are great cheat codes after all. Let's go to scene four, the kind of wobbly scene over there, because at the moment, one workaround I'm using is I'm using the multi-tap delay on a different channel to get my kind of faux rotary speaker sound. I'm just gonna use a rotary block instead for that. So the multi-delay settings that I'm using here, you can see very short delays. I've got 11, seven, three and five milliseconds, then I'm applying chorus to those delays. So I've got a pretty wobbly chorus over here and some slower rates over here. So let's just do this. I'm gonna bypass this block for this scene. And after the multiband compressor, I'm gonna place a rotary block on there. And basically the rotary at stock settings, I think sounds fantastic for this kind of setup. I use it in a few very specific parts. We get this. <laughs> There's sections from Ragdoll songs called The World You Gave Us and Rewind Your Mind, which you can check out if you want to hear those tones in those specific contexts. I'm going to hit save over here. Now, I'm only using four scenes here. It is kind of nice to have some variation. So let's go to my main lead scene over here. So I'm using the multi-tap delay for my lead scene. Basically, I've got a quarter note and a dotted eighth note, and then these two short delays with some chorus applied to them. There is the brand new Aurora delay type in here, which I really like the sound of. So let's do this. Let's just save this particular scene. I think it sounds pretty cool. I'm going to take this scene and I'm going to copy it to scene six. I'm going to use scene five for something else. So we'll go over to scene six. And what I'm going to do here is maybe in the very last channel over here, we'll bring up the Aurora delay. I'm going to bring the mix up to 100%. Bypass mode, I will leave as it is. And this one is brand new type. It's basically giving you that kind of Andy Timmons Halo style Thing. It's using some brand new cross feedback features in the quad parallel delay. Let's bring the level down a little bit. And now I have a wonderful variation on my main lead sound. <laughs> The cross feedback on there is absolutely stunning at loud volumes as well. It just kind of makes you feel like you're playing on top of a mountain overlooking the entire world. It's glorious. So I'm going to name this one Lead 2. So it's just a variation on my main lead sound. Let's talk about Scene 5 because I want to do a very specific thing on Scene 5. I want to take my main rhythm sound and I kind of want to make it sound like it's coming out of a phone speaker or something like that. So we will copy this scene number one over to scene five. I'll place it down over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a filter block right over here. And we're just going to carve out a whole lot of low end and high end. A filter is good because it doesn't really use up that much CPU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this as a high pass filter. So let's go here. I'm going to leave the frequency at about a thousand and let's do this with the high cut. Now we're going to bring this one right down somewhere around 3k. It's going to sound pretty awful on its own, but I use it for little sections of songs where the whole band cuts out and you want that phone or kind of old radio sound. <laughs> Uh, 
absolutely awful, but that's the effect that I want. I might even bring the high cut up a little bit just to make it sound kind of rattier. <laughs> Let's hit save on that one so it sticks with that scene. And then in the scene manager, I'm gonna make sure that this filter block, filter number one, is bypassed in all my other scenes. So I don't want it in anything else, making it sounding skinny except for scene five. So I can come through here and hit bypass on all of that. Now I can save it. The cool thing is when I go from this and I go back to my main rhythm scene, my rhythm scene sounds colossal. Now, I would like another variation of this rhythm scene which has a fuzz in front of it just for specific parts of really heavy riffs. So we'll copy this one again. We'll copy it over to scene, uh, let's go scene eight, why not? I meant to hit scene seven, but I'll put it over here. I'm probably not gonna use this one much. I'm gonna call it fuzz. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a drive block in front of everything over here. So let's go drive number one. I'm gonna use the fuzz face. Uh, basically just bring the drive back a little bit and the level up. This is gonna sound absolutely nasty. Again, I will do the same thing with the scene manager to make sure this isn't affecting any of my other scenes. We'll go into drive block number one. You know, I can actually just do this. I can hit bypass in all scenes. I'm gonna set it to channel A in all scenes as well. And we'll just leave it on there. Now I've got a few options here. I might want say another variation of my lead scene. This time we will take my lead scene. You know what, let's use the one that has the Aurora Delana lead two. And I'm gonna copy that over to scene seven for this particular scene, I want an octave fuzz on top of my main tone. So we will use channel B of the drive block over here and I'm gonna select the octave distortion. This one is really, really fun. If you play with your neck pickup with the tone control all the way down and play up high, you kind of get this crazy octave chirpy sound on it. So I'm gonna call this lead three because it's nice to have your main lead sound and then maybe for two or three songs in the set, use a slight variation of it, just so it doesn't start to sound samey and something really disgusting like this octave distortion kind of does a trick. So I'm gonna have my neck pick up tone control all the way down and I will kick it in. <laughs> Amazing. I wouldn't mind the pitch detune being on that scene either. Let's have a listen to that. So I really built up and expanded upon the core set of tones from my main FM3 preset. Now, the FM3 is totally awesome live. I use it all the time. I love the way it sounds and it covers all my needs. Having the ability to have these extra effects and these extra sounds all within a single preset on the FM9 though can really make playing live a whole lot more fun. And if I'm recording, having these songs on instant recall is pretty great as well. So I'll give you the four main scenes again and then these four alternate scenes that we came up with. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Here's an alternative version to all of that. I have used scene six and instead of adding a fuzz, I've added a filter with the envelope follower attached to the frequency. I'm using a resonant low pass filter there for like an auto wah style effect on there. And then I've got the ring mod pitch tracking on frequency multiplier at 0.5. This gives me this disgusting filter wah sound. <laughs> That is my definition of a character tone right there. Of course, I've still got my big filthy lead sound on scene number two and a variation of it on scene number seven, which has this octave effect on it. <laughs> And if you've watched this far, you might've been screaming out and saying, what about a clean sound? So I've added a second amp block and a compressor to this preset. Basically adding the second amp block adds next to no CPU on here. The way the FM9 is designed, it lets you run dual amps, dual delays, and dual reverbs in pretty much any preset, no matter what. So what I've done here is I've got the studio feedback compressor running into the band commander amp model. On this scene, I'm using the quad parallel delay Again, for some chorusing, we've got pitch detuned and I've got the chorus hall reverb. This is a really pretty sounding clean sound, especially on the neck pickup tapped of this guitar. this preset up on Axchange for anyone who wants to try it. You can get my IR for free on Axchange as well. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you picked up some handy little tips and tricks. I will see you all next week for another Tuesday Tone Tip. Thanks for watching.